Hello guys, <clears throat> here you are. This is what you asked for, this is what you're getting. But the thing is, you asked for one Hellcat. You asked to see the Hellcat back. We've got two here. For those of you that are new to my channel, you probably won't remember. You probably won't know at all, but uh, four years ago now, <laughs> for the last video I did on these was on this one was four years ago. Um, this is basically being built as an FAA um, Hellcat with all the wings and everything, everything closed up and all the wings folded. So as you can see, it's going to sit like that. And then you've got the wings here and they're going to be folded back just like so. So that's how that one's going to be. And as I say, that is going to be the FAA one. Um, but I'm not going to build them both together in one video. I'm, I'm doing separate video builds on both of them. This is the US Navy one. Now this one here, uh, for those of you that don't know, I've really gone to time with this. So in the cockpit here, I've got a torch here so I can shine in and brighten everything up. But um, in the cockpit here, you can see we've got the we've got the air scale cockpit set. You can see there the instrument panel and all the, the levers and everything in there. We've got the HGW seat belts in there, which are absolutely gorgeous. And then we've got all the side in the side uh, detail in there as well. You can see, and that's all from the air scale set, which is absolutely gorgeous. Now this one, the cockpit is not yet complete. You can see it's just. All, um, I was doing it out of the box, but since then I have been sent a uh, cockpit set for it from um, Red Fox. So I may actually use that. I may still do it out of the box, but I have actually got a third kit. So I'd like to do an F3 and I've got all the resin to do the F3. Uh, maybe do an F3 night fighter or something. I don't know. But um, also in this one, you can see up in here, if you go back and look back, back to 2021, um, you'll see I've done part 13 I think part 13a or something is all this and you can see in there you can see we've got all the I don't know if I can get some better light on here to shine into it so you can see inside it's not really working very well but you can see in there you can roughly see in there we've got control cables and everything going on in there so I'll be having this bottom door open. Nah, whatever I try it doesn't work um, if I hold it further away, you can see it better, but whatever I try, it doesn't work and it doesn't want to focus down in that hole either. It wants to focus on the, on the surface. But basically, there are control cables in there. If you go back and look in, um, I mean, I can see them in the, na in, in, with the naked eye here perfectly, but as soon as I put the camera up there, it doesn't want to know. But there are control cables and everything in there. We've got wiring for the cape, for the radios and everything in there. So um, quite happy with it. It's also quite weighty. I've also got my resin fuel tank in there. So you can see when you look up in there, you'll see the resin fuel tank. And we've also got the resin fuel tanks in there. Otherwise, if you don't have the resin fuel tanks in there, you just have you, you just see straight through, straight through there. So um, nice to um, have those in there as well. So um, I've actually done a wing build up in a previous video and then used those wings for the um, FAA version and glued them together here because they maybe they didn't come out very nice so I'm going to cover up cover building up the wings here again because it is very involved you need to be really have your wits about you when you put these wings together so many people messaged me when I was doing this build about problems in this area getting the wings to go together and I think there's a lot of helpful little bits and pieces that I learned from the original build one of the first being, you would instantly think 3-4-5, but it's not, it's 3-5-4. So you need to be a little bit careful there. I also need to do a bit of research and find out what colours we need in here, because I'm not sure that would be interior green. I'm thinking it might might actually be um, um, more zinc chromate. We'll ha I'll have a look at some reference material. I also can't find my reference books. I don't know where they've gone. <laughs> so maybe I've eaten them or something. But um, I'm going to get on and get some, one of these wings built up because these are going to have the, the gun bays open. Um, we've also got the master barrels um, gun set for it. So we'll see all this when we look down inside there. And you've also got the barrel sticking out the end of the, uh, out the, out the, out the wings as well. So pretty cool all in. So um, let me get myself sorted out, get some parts, we'll get a sprue out ready and uh, we'll crack on with the build. After all, it's only been four years in the waiting. So I believe I've done all this. Uh, yes, I've done all that because that's basically putting these in. As you can see, we're going to have the flaps down as well. 
so that's all good so we can get on with the build from here right so that's what we're going to do right so starting on here with the gun bay um we've got the starboard wig lower here filled in that ejector pin mark because it can be seen there i'm not sure how well the um the ammo bins are going to fit but it may be seen so just a bit of a bit of um, super glue in there, rub it down, just nothing. Uh, that's the only one that's visible once it's all closed up. So starting here with step 62, we've got G10, G10 here, which is going to go into there, and we've got G11, which is going to go into there, and they all fit quite nicely. We can grab a drop of extra thin <coughs> and put that in from behind. So we don't leave any horrible glue marks behind. So they can go in there, <coughs> sit nice and vertical, just like so, just like that. And then they're telling us now if you want to use the rockets, drill six holes. Well, I want rockets on this one, so we're having the six holes in there. And basically, that's going to go in like that and fit in there. So we've got it's a nice tight fit so that's all good so what we'll do is we'll put some extra thin in there and we'll put some extra thin in there and then fit that up just like so making sure those ribs stay vertical and then I'm going to Get some cement in there. To hold that one down. And as we know, as I know from previous experience, this wing has got to really come round. Um, it's got a really bow like that. It's, it's too flat at the moment. <clears throat> so um, that's something we'll have to look for. So that's gone in like that some cement down there as well and we'll get some down there as well right so that's that in and then we've got these parts here three five four that's the most important thing make sure you get them in the right positions so we've got them still on the sprue I wouldn't take them off until you're ready to use them because they're easy to mix up here's number three so we can clean off those nibs clean off those ejector it's nice of Airfix haven't put uh, ejector pin marks in these parts. They've instead used these little ejector pin tabs, which is far better. Thank you, Airfix. Well done. Get those nice cleaned up. Clean up here is, is very important um, because this is a very very as you will see it's a very tight assembly it's very tight to get together so um, that's something we'll have to really look for okay so this is number three so this one's going forward most so that's just going to sit in there like that okay as you can see we've got this really nice three-dimensional going on these gun bays they really are pretty so that one can sit in there what I'm going to do here I think is just put a drop of cement in one end just to tack it in place and then I'll go on I'll do five and four and then I'll come back when they're in okay so a schoolboy error here um, I was using the H sprue instead of the G sprue so there's G three four and five on there so, but they're identical. I've measured them up. They, they're identical, so that's good. So, um, back to the G sprue now, which we're supposed to be using. So, we've got these these two ribs going in here, G13 and G12. G12 is going to slot into those there like that. So that goes in. It's nice and tight. That's a really tight fit. Now, if you're going to glue this in, you can see here what I was talking about about the wing has got to curve up. You can see the gap at the front there and at the back. So. If you're going to glue that in, I would suggest only gluing it to, say, the centre rib. Because if you get it glued in and it stops the wings going up, that's not going to help at all. 
Uh, there's also an ejector pin mark there which may well be visible so I've filled that in with some black super glue. Just going to give that a final quick. I've left it a little bit raised and then just to make sure it's nice and flat we'll just go over this glass file and that will really make sure that it's nice and flat. We can see it polishing the plastic around there so that's all good and that's going to slot into there just like so. So again you can see you can see the gaps here where the wing needs to curve up pull itself in so again what we'll do is just make sure it's glued just somewhere in the middle just it isn't it's all going to be held in by the wing sandwich so it doesn't need to be all solid and everything right so that's that 65 done so now we've got g7 and g6 going together which is these two here so I'll get them off the sprue, get them cleaned up, and then we'll see how they look. Okay, so lots going on here. Um, these two spars are fitted but not glued in. So this one here goes together. This is the one I glued together out of two parts. I would seriously suggest getting a nice coarse sanding stick like this and just cleaning up the bottom where you've got the seam to get rid of any step or anything that's there. And also just remove the corners, just not... not sort of big chamfers but just remove the corners to let them go into the wing a lot nicer and then they will fit into the wing into that recess in the wing a lot nicer like so okay you can look on the end there and you can see here whether it's going in fully or not so make sure that goes in fully this one here same thing just take the corners off and it goes in lovely It'll fit in there beautifully if you just take the corners off first just like so Okay, and then you'll see when it, when you come to I have actually dry fitted it just now, but I'm not going to do it again because it's quite a click 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 fit and it's good something's going to break. But um, it does actually go, but the wing has to, as I say, the wing has to sort of curve round a bit because it's it's moulded too flat. Um, so really, what I want to do is get this glued in. But before I do that, I want to paint inside because the gun vase are going to be visible on this one. Um, so I want to make sure that I've got paint in every single nook and cranny. So I'm going to do my usual, yeah, you guessed it, I'm going to spray it black um, and make sure I get in all the little nooks and crannies in here because I don't want to see any grey plastic and also get inside these, these holes in here as well. So I think what I'll do is get that all sprayed black. I've actually gone on and done the other side as well, so you don't have to be bored with watching that. Um, so, yeah, we're, uh, we're really, really getting together now. So I've got the other spar built up as well. So rid of those clamps. Um, this is this one, isn't it? Yeah. So that one's going to go into there like that. And as you can see, it doesn't really want to go in. And also you can see here, there's a step in the part. So. It's better to have it too loose than have it too tight. So we're just going to get rid of that step with a coarse sanding stick just to make sure it's able to go in as far down as it can. Just like that. Okay. So there we go and that will go in there now. It's more likely to go in that groove a lot easier without that step there. Okay, so uh, as I say, I'll carry on and get some painting done and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like when it's done. Right, so painting's all done. And as you can see, I've got in there and got all the, the areas that are going to be difficult to get to. And I've also done the, the actual wings themselves as the other one over here. Um, and now I've gone in and scraped the paint off where we're going to be gluing parts in. So basically this part is going to slot into here, just like so. It's almost like a snap together kit, this. It, it does go together very, very nicely. And that's going to slot into there, just like so. Okay, so that's that. Do we need to glue them? Uh, I don't know, do we? I don't think so. Um... I mean, it wouldn't be a bad idea to glue that into there, I don't think. Because it's wanting to pull itself out. 
So I think what we'll do is get some clamps on here. I'd also like to ask Airfix, if you're watching this, would you please, you've obviously got the CAD bottles, would you please downscale this to 30 second scale? Because we need a 30 second scale Hellcat, which is a decent kit, because the Trumpeter one has got a fat fuselage and the Hasegawa one's like really old and raised panel lines and all that, and it's very simple. So, you know, maybe Tammy will do one one day to go with their 30 second scale range, which would be really nice because that would be the best Hellcat you've ever seen. But, uh, it's a shame actually, Tamiya haven't done anything recently, have they? So there we go, so that's that. So now we can get some cement into there and let that capillary around and do its thing. Get plenty in there, none of this is gonna be seen from the front. I don't really know why they've got all this detail down here because you're not going to see any of it. Get plenty of glue in there. Make sure it's really well welded in. Again, this area behind here you're not going to see, so don't worry about the glue marks and stuff. That's gone in nicely. Get another clamp on now, I think. There we are. A bit more in there, I think. Just to make sure. There we are. So I'll do the other one. And then I'll come back and see what it is we're going to do next. Okay, so there we go. And as you can see, uh, just a couple of clamps being used there. <laughs> um, yeah, really, really having to clamp these down and make sure they're in position. So uh, if, if you're unsure what you're doing, just don't glue them. Because if, if you do glue them in the wrong place, the wings will not fit together. The, the wings are the worst part of this kit. Um, not knocking it at all. They're absolutely wonderful. The design is fantastic. The engineering is fantastic but you need to make sure everything is precise to make sure it goes together well. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention, which I have mentioned in a previous video, is these grooves here in the wing, scrape them out. Uh, just, just remove, come in with a, you know, with a round blade like this, and just remove some material just to widen them up a bit, just to make them a bit easier to go in. That's all you need. Um, so I've put the guns together purely because I want to see if I can get the guns in. Obviously, I'm not going to be using these plastic barrels. I've got the um, the master ones, as I showed you. But I want to see if I can get the guns in after the wing is built up. And that way I can do all the work with the bays and everything. I mean, I don't think you, you won't get the ammo bays in um, with the wing built up because you've got this, this bar going across here. So that's going to stop the gun unless we cut that out and glue it back in. But um, what I'd like to do is get the wing all glued up and get the seams done and everything and then put the guns and everything in because I don't want the barrels sticking out of the front of the wing um, as they do as you can see here the the inner two barrels stick out I don't want them sticking out um, you know I want to be able to um, sand the joint without them in the way so I'd rather do all this actually after the wing is built up so we shall see see what we can get away with um, but as I say we may well cut that bar out and then glue it back in. We shall see. So that's that. Um, not really sure what comes next. So we've done that. We've got the top wing glued together. So now they're telling us to put these spars in, these spar pieces. And we've got to fit these fairings here into the back of the wing. And oh, we've got the um, the lights as well. And then basically uh, fit these lower wings into the upper wings. So still lots of work to do right i'm gonna let all this dry and then we can have a bit of, bit of a play and see about getting these guns in right so as you can see here we've done a bit got this little um that's the landing light there that's what the uh 
guy with the flags is telling the pilot to go up, down, up, down. He's looking at that light. Um, and then we've got the gun base here. All in, everything's all been clamped up. I put the, the flap actuators are in. Uh, and on this one, the flaps are going to be down. We've got the aileron mounts in there. Um, same on this other wing here. We've fitted these brackets in here. Lots and lots of clamping, lots and lots of pulling about. These parts in here, you can see there's a grey patch. Um, the parts are... Bum, bum, where are they? There we go. H40 and G40. See that it's it's mimicking the end of the gun. Um, if you look at the instructions for the master barrels, they don't show it there. So I've, I've cut them out. So don't fit them on yours. Uh, we've got a paint inside here black to make sure there's some um, holes. What I'm thinking about with the guns, I'm going to have to put the guns in before um, because all of the ammunition, and everything's got to go in before we close the wings up. So what I'm thinking is if I can drill the gun barrels, uh, drill the the um, the breeches, the actual guns themselves. Uh, in fact, I don't have to fit the guns, do I? If I draw them first, then I can put the gun in and then put the barrel in from the outside, because the main objective is not to have these guns sticking out when I want to sand that leading edge. That's the main thing I'm trying to get around. These here are like the main spars, um, and they just slot in. Which one? This one's this side. They just slot in here into that main spar, just like so. Okay. So obviously we've got to paint these black because otherwise we're going to see grey plastic or paint them black and then green. Um, they need a lot of filing. It's, it says in the instructions um, when you fit them, it does say, doo -doo -doo -doo, here we go. It says they may need to be sanded to fit. So you need to sand them to fit and they also need to be sanded so that they fit nicely in here. Okay, so do plenty of sanding, get them sanded down. I put a little taper on the end to make them easier to go in. And then we're going to make sure when we paint them, we're just going to get paint on those edges there and around here. We're not going to paint the sides because that's going to make them tighten up again. So I'm going to get everything primed black. Um, I actually managed to break this part here. So when you're building yours, um, I would suggest not gluing this down. And then when you slide the wings in, you've got to be very careful not to break off the end of that spar there. So, uh, so there we go. I've also painted this area here silver because we've got the, I guess, in their formation lights um, here and here in the tops of the wings. So I painted them silver so it sort of looks a little bit brighter when you're going from behind. And I've gone round with the black paint, obviously, in the holes. And I've gone round the outside edge of the lights with a black pen to get away that, get rid of that sort of chromey bright edge, which you, you always see me do on my clear parts. Um, so there we go. Uh, so I'm just going to go on and get that painted black and then I'm going to go on and get it all painted green and then when we get it all together then I'll paint this area in here blue because I want to get the look of um, having the green uh, like I've done in here. I don't know if you can see it in there. But, um, no, we can't get the light in there can we here once again. It looks the same with the cockpit wasn't it? But it, what I've done is imagine it was sprayed green before first and then they've gone afterwards with the blue spray so you can see green in the areas they couldn't get to. Yeah it's daft, it's silly but uh, it's just what I like to do. It just adds a bit of interest and it? it makes it a bit different. So um, that's what we'll do. We'll get, we'll get the spring green and then when I spray this blue in here will stay green so when you look at certain angles, I, I don't even think you can see any of this, but when you look at certain angles you'll still see bits of green showing through. So I'm going to get this painted black and then I'll come back. There we go. All the ammo boxes are done as well. And I used up some black paint on one of the doors. We also got this rib to go in as well. So I thought I'd get some black paint on that. Or on those, should I say. So uh, yeah, we're um, we're cracking on. This is a very slow part of the build. It's um, You can't just pile into it. You have to do a bit, clamp it, do a bit, clamp it, and then paint it. And it's just... I've been hours on this. for hours. <laughs> and uh, I don't seem to be getting very far, to be honest. So, um, right. We'll, uh, we'll get some green paint on there and then we'll push on. <laughs> it's just crazy. Oh, I found one of my books, by the way, so that's good. Okay, so here we go, painted green. Rather than using the H58 interior green, which is here, I've used this one. This is um, AK's US interior yellow green. It's a bit lighter in colour. Um, you can see on the cockpit here, you can see how dark that seat is compared to the green here. You can see the difference in the colour. So this is more like a zinc chromate green. So I'm going to end the video here because I want you guys to tell me which is correct. Because um, another zinc chromate yellow, which is like XF4, which I've got 
here. And as you can see, that's really sort of yellow. Um, and then there's the zinc chromate green, which I believe is going to be the correct colour for like the interior of the the Devastator and the, and the um, the A20 Havoc, Havoc. So I think that's going to be this colour for the interior. Later aircraft would have been this colour. Some, of course, were bronze green, weren't they? Which was a very dark green. Um, but uh, yeah, if you could let me know in the comments below if it's correct. I've done the ammo boxes in this colour as well. I'm not sure because I'm looking at my references and, and on all the references I'm looking at are restored aircraft. So it's, it's always a bit, um, a bit of a sticky wicket, that one. So uh, if you could let me know in the comments which is correct, if not what you think, what you know and what you know is correct, then I'd be very interested to know. The other thing I noticed with this stuff, the bloody coverage is amazing. You thin it like 50-50 with leveling thinners and over the black primer it's just phew, one, one coat is covered. So I've done the, the main spar as well. Um, and, the, and the bulkhead as I just showed you um, so yeah all looking good so I'd like to know please tell me if the, if that's the correct colour or not or if I need to make it more yellow or what yeah maybe a mix of these 50 50 or something but um yeah let me know in the comments below please and also if, if you could the this if this is the correct colour for um, the interior of earlier aircraft rather than this one I believe this is like uh, sort of later aircraft like this one, the correct colour for the cockpit. But I believe early aircraft had a zinc chromate cockpit, didn't they? Some even had a, 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 a yellow cockpit. So uh, if you could let me know, I'd be grateful. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this little. She's not been very long, has it? It's only about thirty minutes. Um, but this is the third day of work, so it's uh, thirty minutes into three days. Three days into thirty minutes. So um, thanks for watching. I'll see you all soon with part. What would it be 16 and uh, once I know about these colors being correct and then I can push on with it thanks for watching bye for now